Hey there, podcast listeners. This is Corbett Lunsford, your host. This special episode of the Building Performance Podcast is from last year's Fall Fast Track, which is my annual six-week mastermind course with people all over the world, all about profiting from home performance. If you'd like to learn more and pre-register for free for the 2015 Fall Fast Track, you can do that at homeperformance.training. Enjoy. A rising tide lifts all boats. Fall Fast Track. Today, we're talking with Rick Chitwood, the founder of Chitwood Energy Management in California. Rick, thank you so much for talking with us today. You're welcome. Good to talk to you. The topic this week is rocking the installation. And you have been rocking installations as a design build contractor and as a consultant and as a trainer for decades. Can you please just tell us where you came from? Well, I came from kind of the normal HVAC industry. Um, out there doing duct systems that leaked like crazy and equipment that was oversized. But in the mid-80s and early 90s, we started purchasing, purchasing more and more building performance test equipment. And that gave us the ability to, of course, assess the performance of our own work and find out, even though we said we did good work, that our work wasn't actually that good. The first duct system of mine, I tested with a duct blaster. Um, the duct blaster couldn't pressurize the system to 25 Pascal, so it couldn't even test our system. It was so leaky. Awesome. Hear that, HVAC contractors? It's okay. <laughs> even Rick did it. <laughs> so, and how did you start realizing that things should be done better, not just that they could? Well... We always kind of had the desire to be good at what we did and do the best systems possible. And the more information we gleaned from our testing, um, the more it was clear that the opportunity for improvement was huge. Um, you know, with duct leakage at 30% of fan flow on many of our systems and ducts in the crawl space or attic, it, it was just so much opportunity, we couldn't ignore it. And, you know, in a weird way, the industry hasn't caught on to that yet. We still have the typical new system in California with significant opportunity for improvement. I love that you put it that way. So when you, as far as opportunity for improvement goes, let's uh, trace the arc. So you bought a blower door in the 80s when they were first out. Um, and then you got an infrared camera, right? Right. So by about 92, um, we had everything we needed to kind of assess the performance of systems, infrared cameras, duct blaster, blower door, um, all the pressure gauges and thermometers we needed to actually measure the output of a heating or cooling system. But you also started looking at the walls of houses, uh, and yeah. What, what, the, how, what did that lead you to uh, decide? So the infrared camera quickly taught us that we couldn't rely on the insulation contractors to properly air seal and insulate a home. So we quickly became not only a, a heating and air conditioning subcontractor, but we came and it became an insulation subcontractor. So now we had kind of control over all the heating, cooling, energy costs. And were you incorporating performance testing on your own work before it was code in California? Oh, long, long before. And the requirement for performance testing in California has only been to kind of industry minimum standards. Um, you know, anything less than 6% duct leakage on a new system or 15% on an old system um, is all we, the industry goal was. And of course, we measured everything, not just duct leakage, and our goals were, you know, always zero leakage. So I'm curious, since you've seen the uh, California Title 24 Energy Code, which is kind of revered around the country by non-Californians as like really serious energy code where the government got together with the building performance contractors. Um, do you think that it's done 
uh, a lot of good or a little good, or has it has it kind of hurt the private market industry at all? I'm, I'm kind of interested in somebody who's seen it come and and into being. Well, it's complicated, and I think about that a lot. You know, it's kind of the industry, the residential construction industry and the energy feature subcontractors have really hurt themselves in the last few decades by pretty much only competing on price. And the market kind of has the attitude that, well, if we have all these complicated codes and standards and requirements, that's going to take care of efficiency and installation quality. And the only thing important to the customer is price. So as we focus more and more on whatever's cheapest and fastest on our focus to uh, be low bidder, um, we just don't pay attention to true performance, um, except to the extent where we meet the code minimums. And you never, as a design build contractor, um, or even it sounds like before you were a design build contractor when you were doing HVAC and just installation subcontracting, you never competed on price. How did you uh, compete on quality? I mean, what was your kind of value proposition? Oh, we tried lots of things. The first thing we tried was HERS ratings. Um, you know, if our quality work would rate better, that would excite customers and they'd write us bigger checks without asking questions. And of course, that didn't work at all. The next thing we tried was um, in the late 90s was Energy Star new home certification. So we'd epoxy a nice little four-inch square brass plaque to the house in an attempt to excite homeowners and get them to write us bigger checks. That didn't work. So what worked for us is utility bill guarantees. I'd issue a really simple guarantee, um, and we were focusing mostly on, on new homes and not production. And our utility bill guarantee would say something like, if the heating cooling portion of your utility bill would go over this many dollars per year, and it was usually just a few hundred dollars somewhere between, oh, well, our lowest one was $99 a year, and they'd go as high as $600 a year on a great big house uh, with expensive fuel available. And it worked Perfectly, It so distracted customers, they'd say things like, um, well, I don't know what you're doing, but I want that. So, and, and just to be clear, to follow up on that, you said if it exceeds this dollar amount, then what? What would you do? Oh, then for the first three years, I, I would pay the excess over the guarantee amount. Wow. And that sounds like not a lot of money. I mean, $99. You're saying $99 for an entire year? Yes. Yeah, and it was a really little house. It was like <coughs> 1,100 square feet or something. And and that's when we have complete control over the air sealing, the insulation, the installation of the HVAC equipment. And, of course, we commission everything and check the windows to make sure the proper windows had been installed. Um, so it gives us complete control. The The beautiful thing about our utility bill guarantees is is when a customer would show it to any any of our competitors, the competitors would often recommend that we do the work. They would say something like, this is impossible. Your, your August air conditioning bill is going to be that big. You might as well have him do the work. He'll go broke, and he'll be paying your utility bill for the first three years. So definitely have him do it. Wow. And so the uh, let's, let's hit the... Uh the rubber to the road, how many times did you have to take someone up on a warranty claim? Um, n never. We never – I got only one phone call, a lady in a big 6,000-square-foot house with a pool and a spa and two kids and two dogs, and she called and thought her $350 per month, and, of course, that was – you know, with the pool and the spa electrical costs, which, of course, we weren't covering, might be exceeding our heating cooling guarantee. Hmm. 
But by the time I got to her house a week later, um, she had talked to her neighbor. And her neighbor's bill, who also had a 6,000-square-foot new home, um, the neighbor's utility bill was $1,300 that month. So she was pretty diffused as she learned <laughs> what her neighbor's bill was in that new house. Good. That's excellent. So I just want to make sure that everyone heard that. Uh, Rick has never had to fulfill his obligations on that guarantee. And it's because – now, how did you know that you were – hitting the right number. Did you use uh, a modeling software? Oh, we we do. We use the compliance software for the California Energy Code, which when you run it in a research mode, will give you thousands of BTUs per year for heating and cooling and converted that to the local cost of fuel and that established our guarantees. And and because we had so much control doing the modeling, the design work, the installation work, the commissioning work, and, of course, the follow-up work, which was um, tracking our, our the utility bill. So we, in the early days, I had to give my homeowners uh, a stack of self-addressed stamped envelopes and said, you know, ma- mail me your bill after you pay it or make a copy and mail it to me. And so that closed the loop and kind of confirmed that our modeling was okay. Excellent. And so aside from your work as a contractor, you've been training for years and years. And you, in fact, wrote a very excellent book called Measured Home Performance that I recommend for everybody. I want to put a link to it in the um, uh, in the portal, uh, in my training portal. But what what has your experience been in training people, especially in you work mainly in California, right, where everything is different? I, I do, okay. and the one thing that I think is the same everywhere, and the one thing that's most difficult to kind of move away from business as usual, low bid is everything, um, is that part where you can distinguish yourself as being different. And for me, it was just perfect with the utility bills. You know, once the the word got out that I was doing it, we actually only did it for three or four years. And we it just distinguished this as something doing completely different work and was worth whatever I want to charge. And that's the difficulty with the people we see in class. They have so much trouble moving away from the low bid is most important and getting to that nice cost-effective balance between equipment efficiency and performance and comfort, um, all the things people expect they're going to get but typically don't in, in retrofitting homes or in new homes for that matter. It's sad how much opportunity for improvement there is even in brand new homes in California with all of our strict energy standards. So uh, as far as installation goes, um, clearly you have it down pat, but you've tested thousands and thousands of homes that were done as part of programs or, um, you know, that have been done by your competitors. What is What are some of the, the kind of no-brainer uh, mistakes that get made again and again in installations? Because you'll talk to contractors who are not on the ball about this stuff, and they'll say, well, yeah, in your fantasy world and in theory, that's all great, but this is real life and we have a real house here. So what are those things that are stopping contractors from being able to actually achieve the savings and the performance that you've gotten to? And I think the number one thing is they don't have any clue how what they just installed actually performs. Um, you know, typically we don't necessarily ever design a residential system, even in California. We just throw in the same old furnace we've been throwing in for decades and the same old air conditioner that we've been throwing in for decades. And we don't ever look around with building performance test equipment and kind of see how it works. In residential construction, so many of the mechanical systems, it's easy for the homeowner to judge how it's performing. You know, how long does it take to get hot water um, to a faucet, 
does electricity come out of the electrical outlet? You know, that sort of simple observation allows people to kind of judge those mechanical systems. But when it comes to heating and cooling, um, you know, if the house is at 72 in the winter and 75 in the summer at the thermostat, they're kind of okay with it. But so often, you know, we have tremendous temperature stratification issues, and it's all because nobody measured the delivery velocity and the delivery temperature and made sure it was in acceptable ranges. And it's those simple quality control feedback things that can make the difference between it being 85 on the second floor and 70 on the first floor, even with a zoned system. Instead of kind of going back to our simple design and installation basics, most problems are we try to solve them by adding on more stuff, whether we're adding ceiling fans to the room or zoning to a mechanical system. And, you know, those are kind of add-on fixes to the real problem, which is getting the delivery velocity and temperature where it should be. Hmm. Is there anything you're excited about in the next couple of years for the uh, performance contracting industry? There's so much that needs oh, to good. happen. Good. I was going to say, please don't say no. <laughs> oh, you know, my my focus the last well has always been kind of California, and I'm focusing more and more on the California HVAC industry. Um, back in 2005. Um, California put in their energy standards uh, a credit called quality insulation installation, and it just focused on the basic performance factors for the installation of insulation and how it should be done. And so in the last 10 years or so, we've seen significant improvement in the enclosure performance air sealing insulation performance is much better than it was 10 years ago. But because it's so hard to truly assess the performance of an HVAC system, in the last 10 years we've seen zero improvement in HVAC performance in California. We still see really low airflow, really low sensible cooling delivery, tremendous stratification, in our brand new, just installed systems today. So, and that's with, you know, a certain amount of uh, third party HERS verification. You know, on every new system now in California, we have to measure duct leakage. On many systems, we have to measure charge and airflow, depending on the compliance path used. So, even with you know, some testing involved, we still see pathetic performance. So tremendous opportunity trying to capture that performance in our industry. Do you see uh, that the hope is with like monitoring systems, these new energy management softwares that people can download on their apps and see how many CFM and BTUs their system is moving? Yeah, and I I haven't seen one of those that's, that um, – Installed, so I don't know if they're simple enough to be used. You know, many of our attempts at home automation and system automation um, are too complicated for homeowners. They just don't take the time to um, access the touch screen and, and look at it. And so I think we need to keep it really simple. I mean, that's always been my goal is just dead simple. And when we do our customer walkthrough, we always program the thermostat um, for them at, to the temperatures they're like, they like, and we don't do setbacks. Um, a new home in mild California, setbacks don't save much energy because a well-insulated home doesn't cool off at night to the point where you can actually save some energy. Mm -hmm. So we keep the home comfortable 24 hours a day. And customers love it. Whenever they walk in their home, it's comfortable. And, you know, the funny call I get every once in a while is four or five years after we installed the system, I'll get the call, 
there's a light flashing on my thermostat, a low battery light or something. What do I do? I haven't touched my thermostat in the last four <laughs> years. And, you know, to me, that's heartening. They've been happy for four years and haven't done a thing, rather than so many customers that are struggling to be comfortable and opening and closing windows and forgetting to close them again and sealing fans and calling back the HVAC contractor. Yeah. All that stuff. Absolutely. Well, it sounds like you really are making a big difference uh, for California contractors. I hope that they continue to appreciate you and listen to what you have to say. Um, And thank you so much for taking time to talk with us today. Oh, you're welcome. Rick Chitwood is the founder of Chitwood Energy Management in California and the author of the excellent book, Measured Home Performance. A rising tide lifts all boats. Full fast track. 